Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, is the most efficient way to customize large language models like GPT-4 with your data. And in just a moment, you'll know what RAG is and how to use it at your company. Welcome to episode 17. As I discussed in episode 14, RAG is one of the three most popular applications of generative AI. While it is more difficult to implement than straightforward automated document processing, the impact can be significantly bigger. RAG is easier to understand with an example, and I'm going to show you one with ChatGPT. Let's suppose that I'm an employee at Prolego, and I want to know whether I'm allowed to bring my dog Charlie to work. I can ask ChatGPT, and it will give me a generic maybe as a response. Now imagine I ask the same question, but first retrieve the appropriate section from Prolego's workplace policies about pets. I then paste it into the prompt and add a few instructions. Now ChatGPT can generate a useful response augmented by this actual data. The generated response is augmented by the data I retrieve. Retrieval augmented generation. And since the pet policy doesn't ban sleeping on laps and eating too many treats, I can bring Charlie to work. This simple example illustrates why RAG is so popular. I didn't have to retrain or modify the model. Instead, I leverage OpenAI's investment and simply supplement it with my data. Of course, you don't want to be pasting text into ChatGPT, so you will need an application that does this automatically. Here's how. We begin with thousands of pages of employee policy documents in emails, wikis, PDFs, whatever. We split them into chunks of text and then use an LLM to convert each chunk into a vector of numbers called an embedding. Embeddings allow you to find text that is most similar in meaning using mathematical techniques. Be sure to watch episode one for a primer on embeddings. We then pass the question through the same LLM to generate an embedding. In our example, my question about pets would find the embeddings related to pet policy. We then convert them back to text and pass both to a generative LLM, which performs the same function I did with ChatGPT. Let's look at an example. We built a RAG solution on top of the Formula One rulebooks. The data comes from over 400 pages of rules from four different PDFs, and most of it is very complex. This example is representative of the types of problems you will encounter in domains like legal, financial services, healthcare, manufacturing, and B2B e-commerce, which I guess covers just about everything, where you have disparate arcane technical information. Our goal is to provide an interface such that non-experts can ask questions about the rules and get general information. Let's see it in action. The user has three options. A quick search finds the rules that most closely match the language based solely on the embeddings. Since the LLM is not used, the response is fast but likely less accurate. A search and summarize that passes the relevant rules and questions to the LLM for answer generation. This button is the most common way RAG is implemented, and it takes about 15 to 30 seconds. And finally, a deep search that leverages the LLM as an analytical agent for more precise answers, a process that can take one minute or more because it requires multiple calls to the LLM. Let's run a few scenarios. We'll start with an improvement over PDF searching. Imagine you're trying to learn where a team can display a logo on the car. Doing a control F search on each of the four PDFs for the word logo doesn't yield anything relevant. We would have to guess other search terms or just start reading. Quick search is more efficient at finding the most appropriate sections based on the meaning and not literal keywords. It turns out the correct rule uses the similar term emblem and not logo and quick search finds it instantly. In our second scenario, we're attempting to translate arcane and technically complex language into layman's terms. Take a look at this paragraph. I honestly can't understand this paragraph without help from a lawyer or a significant investment of time. I mean, really, what the heck does this mean? With search and summarize, we can translate it into simple language. When calculating costs, exclude the three highest paid individuals. This I can understand. 
Note that we're not just passing the relevant rules, but we also pass specific definitions. This type of customization is necessary to get most RAG applications functioning as desired. Finally, let's explore a scenario where a user needs a more precise answer to a complex question. Our question is, are race driver salaries included in the cost cap? To me, this seems pretty straightforward and should be answered with a simple yes or no. However, the rules reference several types of race drivers, so the question is actually ambiguous and can't be answered with the two simpler approaches. Deep search forces the model to evaluate its own results and reason through it to develop the correct answer. No. So, now you understand what RAG is and how to apply it at your company. There are hundreds of RAG videos on YouTube, but this is the only one that covers the practical issues I discussed today. And that's what makes our community here so amazing and different. Join us by subscribing and sign up for our weekly email newsletter so you don't miss an episode like this one. Now watch this next video where Prolego's engineers do a demonstration and deep dive of the Formula One RAG application I showed you today. Oh, my God.